I will confirm we're, we're putting more money uh, on the table there. Uh, this is all about saving jobs and giving people the quality of life they deserve in southwestern Ontario. What you've seen uh, in the last few days, I would say it's just normal negotiations. I wish that uh, Canadians would not be uh, too concerned over that. Uh, we're going to get to uh, uh, an agreement. And like I said, uh, we see uh, progress in the comments made by Premier Ford this morning in Canada. And welcome back. Ontario's Premier promised more money today for the Stellantis deal. We thought it was a done deal for an electric vehicle battery plant, but it seemed to unravel earlier this week. So will this Stellantis snuff will forever change the blueprint for all future major industrial deals? Let's bring back our strategy session uh, panelists, Greg McEachran, Fred Delore, and Anne McGrath. Thanks to the three of you for sticking around. So it, it ended up, uh, Greg, by being a little bit of a, of a fight between Ottawa and, and, and Ontario over who should put more money, no you pay more, no you pay more. It was that uh, between the Premier of Ontario and Win the, the, Bubbles. The, the, finance, <laughs> the, uh, the finance minister. So is the Windsor mayor right when he says we look, Canada looked a little bit amateurish? Uh, well, you know, th there's a bit of an issue here where the Premier on Wednesday said this isn't true. It's you know, it's the Feds need to do this. Um, the aforementioned Frankie Bubbles, uh, Minister Champagne, I should be much more correct, uh, said no. It's the it's the province's role. And then we see today the province has stepped up with more money. We don't know how much. Um, I worked in government relations for about 15 years, advising companies. And I had a cliche that the sharper tools in the government relations toolkit are at the bottom. You use them last. There are things like. Accusing, making an accusation in, in question period, going to the media. Negotiating in public is not something that I would have advised. Yeah. And I found myself a bit puzzled on this. Uh, Stellantis is a fairly new entity. It's brands like Chrysler and Alfa Romeo. It's huge. But I also note this week in the UK, yes. they're fighting with the government saying Brexit is not being very helpful for us. You need to, to fix this. So I do feel that we saw some negotiating in public. We don't get all of it. And I don't think it was helpful for anyone. And and we don't know how much money taxpayers are going to be, you know, sort of. So, so I'm wondering, Anne, does it matter how much money? And is this corporate sponsorship of some sort? So one of the things to remember here is that the original deal was before the Inflation Reduction Act yes. came in in the U.S. So I think that the, the, the introduction and the implementation of the Inflation Reduction Act does change things for Canada. Most importantly, I think we know that this is a lot of good paying jobs. That's, that, that's very, very important. It, is, it also helps to achieve some very important climate goals. So I think it is an important project. I, I'm a bit surprised. I was a bit surprised. I think it did look, it did look very Canadian, the, all the jurisdictional jockeying and so forth for sure it did um, but but I also I, I also was sort of surprised that that the federal government when it originally happened didn't at some point at least get a signature uh, so that if there was a need to uh, renegotiate, you're renegotiating from more of a position of strength because you actually have a signed deal so that was a bit uh, amateurish actually in my view so you know, I, I think that there's a lot at stake here, and it has to move forward. And I think that the uh, I think that it is actually incumbent on both the federal and the provincial governments to do their part and make sure that they're uh, make sure that those jobs are are, are and and at Windsor Essex need, th those jobs are really important in Windsor Essex. Yeah, absolutely. And and you know, Doug Ford is uh, Fred, one of the big cheerleaders of uh, this this project and today we didn't hear him say but he said forget about political stripes this is about saving jobs um, you know say I can't stand these political stripes like he's saying forget it this is a team Canada thing a little bit like what Francois Philippe Champagne said but Mr. Poiliev puts him in an interesting position you said earlier his job is to criticize and to oppose what does he do with this deal and and you know he wants seats in Ontario it is a major uh, issue that Mr. Poliev has is his is his relationship with some of the provincial premiers. And most of the conservative, or mo sorry, most of the provincial governments are conservative, and they're a lot yeah. of them the ones who want to build these type of jobs or create these type of opportunities need to work with the federal government and have a relationship. So it puts them a bit offside with this. But what Mr. Poliev is looking for is not a relationship with premiers. He's looking for voters. He's looking for people that he can rile up. And if this is an issue where he can show where you know if he can tell the story that this is corporate wealth 
welfare. This is more money out the window. Um, that's what he's going to do to try to drive votes to him. And he's going to be using different examples. And I think he's going to be looking at this as the tip of the iceberg. We're seeing now this, you know, the, the, what the U.S. did with their uh, Inflation Reduction Act. This came in, and now we've got all these companies that deals, as Anne pointed out, were signed before that act came in. Now they're looking to uh, to tear those up and get more money. I think there's going to be more opportunities for Mr. Polyev to yeah. change. But, and it, the challenge, though, Joyce, with that, a couple of weeks ago we were on this very panel. We talked about the Volkswagen deal in St. Thomas. And on that yeah. day, on that Friday, um, the leader of the opposition was very critical of it. Come Monday, not a peep in question period. Why? Karen Vecchio is the a yes. conservative MP and the, is the uh, is a local member of parliament. Uh, the mayor is a former conservative member of parliament. It's held provincially by Doug Ford. So it, it's interesting. Like I, I, you, I love Fred's phrase of message discipline a couple of weeks ago. The message discipline for the conservatives, as Anne pointed out earlier about the change in the one of a day, or just over a weekend in terms of this. So this is the difficulty for the conservatives. There are places that they're going to win or need to win in Ontario. Ontario, for example, in the next election, and how do you criticize these deals and not lose support? But how it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard to audition for the job of prime minister when it doesn't look like you're all that interested in jobs. You know, it, when it looks like you're more interested in scoring political points, in in, in in getting in the news of the day, and all of the things that he's doing, he is opposing, opposing, opposing. At some point, he's got to support Canadian, and, and you know, talking about work, he's got to support Canadian workers. He's got to support the Canadian economy. I agree, but how, at which point is too, is, 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 is too much, too much money? Uh, Canada cannot compete with the IRA, the, the Joe Biden's bill. It's impossible. That's 300 at $75 billion on the table that's out of, our, our, out of Canada's league. So when does it become too much? Well, my view is that it needs to be done strategically, and I, and, and, and I think that, that St. Thomas and Windsor-Essex make sense. Uh, obviously, you're not going to be able to compete at the same level as the U.S., but there are certain key places where uh, you can compete and uh, actually get the benefits of, of that competition. I think just throwing a pile of uh, money out there willy-nilly would, would, number one, it would be ridiculous in terms of the money spent, but also it wouldn't work. I think that, I think that this way of doing it, like where it's a kind of, uh, you know, you look at the, the, the region, you look at the jobs, you look at the, the climate goals, and, uh, and, and, the, and how much you need to put on the table to have that happen makes sense to me. Fred, I have uh, 45 seconds left, but I want to hear this. Ontario gets two huge deals, Alberta gets nothing. How does that play? Well, look, it's about sitting at the table. I mean, Mr. Ford has developed a good relationship with the Prime Minister, and this is about, this is about working together. Uh, Daniel Smith's biggest federal ally is Pierre Polyev, uh, not Prime Minister Trudeau. So when you have different allies and different working relationships, uh, you have different people getting different outcomes. Or is it because there are not that many liberal votes, vo votes in Alberta? Is that... Is that I think if there, I, look, I think I think good good policy is good politics. If there's something that could lead to jobs and do something, I think Mr. Trudeau would do that, as any prime minister would. That's unfortunately all the time we have, but uh, we'll be talking about it. Uh, apparently, there's going to be an announcement next week on Stellantis. So, Greg McEachran, Fred Delore, and McGrath, thank you for being here.